So, do you know what it requires to be a Muslim? Yeah, yeah, no. Yes, but that's like saying one God, but sometimes I to believe in all the prophets that were sent. To believe in all the books that were sent and the angels. And you confess this. Now, when you make this confession in the tub, it's between you and God. Then you are Muslim because that means you are submitting and you follow him. The next stage now to be a Muslim is to acquire the knowledge. Because as you correctly said, if you follow something, you must possess the knowledge. So when you seek the evidence, the first evidence to be a Muslim is to pray. Because the Quran tells us, the designer who designed us, designed us for a purpose. So he knows better than your father and me what you should want. And he designed us to worship him. Today. Yes, but when you begin, not, you don't necessarily I like the <laughs> okay. yeah. oh, yeah. oh, How you, yeah. that Now you have to seek the knowledge. You have to go to the mosque, maybe speak to Imam or someone who is more of a scholar. Then you do it slowly. You don't do it slowly, slowly. You don't do the five prayers. That's the mistake I made. Uh, and then it was too much, too yeah. overwhelming. Step by step. You don't it's like we train. gradually yeah. exercise. We can't, we can't go five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. And, when we and by the way, the prayer doesn't take more than like 10 minutes, you know? Or so it's not like... Are you quiet uh, or are you speaking while doing the prayer? This is, this is not important. Like you can see it later, maybe. Maybe yes. you can see it later. The most important... So we, we, we say parts of the Quran in the prayer. We memorize them yes. and we say parts of it. But like I told you, the prayer lasts maybe 10 minutes Good. at the most. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like uh, five times a day you're praying for many hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just show that you keep the connection with God throughout the day because yeah. the prayers are spread over the day. Not all of them like during the daytime. So we have one quite early before the sun rises. Yeah. Another one like, uh, you know, after the sun yeah. has risen. After, after Yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, so what throughout it, the days it's spread over five days. It subdue you from committing sin because as soon as you're going to think you're going to go another prayer. Another prayer. But from my perspective as someone that's coming to Islam, you ask how do I do the prayer? You have to go get the knowledge and then you learn at your own pace and implement it at your own pace. Yeah. When you ask for the knowledge and you seek that knowledge, you ask Allah for God. Yeah. You don't need to go through somebody else, Muhammad, Salah, Rebbe, Salah, or Jesus. You just go to Allah directly. But the most important thing, you have to be sincere. Yeah. Do not follow what your father or far forefathers did, especially have to have no knowledge. Your father and I were yeah. talking. Yeah. And the knowledge that you had, that I, at your age, we didn't have it. Yeah. So he's giving you, and your mom giving you, uh, well, yeah. not him. Yeah. I think you get your bread from your mom. <laughs> What's your, is your dad a Christian? Yes, yeah, he's, he's a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. So you said you're an agnostic. Now, yeah. what what would make you believe uh, or know that there is actually a creator and we are not just existing without any reason or without any causation? It's just because it, it's hard for me to recognize what's the true story about it. Yeah. So when I don't know if it's the Christian God I know it's the same God in Islam and in uh, Christianity, but I feel like it's easier for me as a human being to understand that it was just random. random. That's easier for me to understand than understanding a bigger power which is creating everything and choosing what to create. So what do you mean by random? You said random. Right? Yeah, I, I think uh, evolution, Darwinism, no, but, I, I guess. You know, before the evolution even. Evolution got nothing to do with the existence of God, you know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where they go, where they, sorry, it's, yeah, not, it's nothing father, to do with the negation of existence yeah, of God. Because my father believes in Christianity yeah. and in evolution. Yeah. He thinks but you God see, created it. Before you even go to evolution, you need to understand that we believe that, or we know that all of this existence, the universe and everything within it exists, right? It didn't come about randomly. There must be a cause because the universe began to exist at one point. Yeah. So there must be something that brought it into cause, no, into existence. But I feel like the Big Bang, it was just two atoms colliding, creating a big thing. Where did the atoms come from? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> so you see, there has to be something before the universe existed. Yeah. Someone or something.
something. Yeah. There has to be an entity before the universe existed because the universe couldn't have created itself because it did not exist at one point. But who created God? Yeah, we'll come to that. Okay. Okay. So what we need to understand here is that there must be something which is independent, which doesn't rely upon anything else for its existence. It's self-sufficient, independent, and it has to be eternal and ever-existing. You know why? Because the question which you ask, who created God? Uh, you would then ask, okay, who created that God of the God? And so on, you know? There has to come a point where it has to be a necessary existence, okay? So, no, the, yeah, it is on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, necessary existence means um, it's self sufficient and independent. The universe couldn't have created itself because it didn't exist at one point, it could not have come from nothing either. Okay? Yeah. Now, the what other options do we have? It cannot come from nothing. It couldn't have created itself. So the only other alternative is that there must be an entity which is self-sufficient, independent, and ever-existing. Otherwise, you'll have the problem of asking who created that, who created that. Yeah. And you'll have an infinite regress. Yeah. That means once you have an infinite regress, that is an impossibility in existence. Yeah. Because yeah. nothing which has infinite regress ever exists. Yeah. Yes? Just like when, I'll give you an example, you know, like if you are going to borrow a book from a library yeah. and there are people in front of you and this queue or this line is infinite. Yeah. Will you ever get a book? No. You'll never? No. So because you ask, you're going to ask the question, okay, who is in front of me? Who is in front of that person? Yeah. But then somebody tells you it's infinite. It's Which never ending. first, the chicken or the egg? It's yeah. The same thing. Yeah, because it's, it's, possible. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a paradox in a way yeah. and it's something which never exists in reality. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what we need is we need to have in that queue, we need to have a person who is the first, yes. okay, yes. to whom the book is being handed, then he'll finish his turn and then he'll go to the next yeah. person until your chance comes. Only then you'll get a book. But if there's an infinite number of people in front of you, let's call it an infinite regress, where well, you will never get the book. Yeah. Similarly, if you have infinite number of creators, yes, who created this universe, yeah. then the universe wouldn't exist. You see what I mean? Yeah. Because of the infinite regress. Yeah. And this fallacy is something that we should avoid yeah. when we are talking causality. What is causality? That we believe that everything that begins to exist must have a cause. Yeah. Okay, so the cause and effect. Uh, so cause and effect is something we observe in our daily life. For example, when you make tea, yeah. if there is heat, the water boils. Yeah. So the, uh, the heat is the cause yeah. for the water to boil yeah. and you to enjoy your tea later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah? Without that heat, you won't see the water boil. No. Okay. It could be in the form of electric, can be form of fire, yeah. whichever form, whatever form the energy is. But there must be some heat for the water to boil, uh, and then it has to be in order to boil. It has to reach 100 degrees. This is the physical laws which define, yeah. but it's within the universe. Yeah. So all these laws, all the matter, and by the way, what you said earlier about two two items colliding for the Big Bang, that's completely and utterly false. Okay. Should I tell you why? Okay. You should go and read up because matter did not exist until 400 million years after the Big Bang. Does it make sense? No. <laughs> yeah, it won't because you have to study this. Okay. It took a long time for the mod for matter itself to come into existence again. When all the physical laws were right. Yeah. Yes, then only matter came into existence. It was singularity. But... Yeah, even the singularity, it didn't just pop into existence from them. The scientists, majority of whom who agree uh, with the most uh, accepted model, which is the Big Bang model, they say that... Uh, the universe began to exist something like 13.8 billion years ago. So there's a finite time. Yeah, you yeah, see? Yeah. Even billions of years are still finite, isn't it? It's not infinite. So we know that it began to exist at some point. Yeah. And that's the reason we said there must be a cause. And as Muslims, we believe this cause, who is independent, self-sufficient, uh, eternal, doesn't have any needs for anything. He's the one who has the ability to create. Ability, he has a will to be able to create something. All these things point to the fact that this supernatural being, which we call as God, is the only 
any plausible explanation yeah. for all of this to come into existence. Okay? And so far, I haven't actually used any religious book, either the Bible or the Quran, to tell you this. This is purely from inference, yeah. from logic, and from yeah. the available uh, data that we have from science and so on. See what I mean? So you cannot be an agnostic. You must be at least belief, have belief in a supernatural being who brought this all into existence. What, what do I class myself as then? If I'm not agnostic, yeah, so, I'm not an atheist. Yeah, so if you don't reject God, then you believe in a... Do you believe in a supernatural being? I guess, yes. Okay, so you're a theist. 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 Means you believe in God. You believe in God. Atheist is who reject God. The opposite of a theist. Yeah. Yeah. So atheist and theist. Yes? So you're so, searching for everything. Yeah. So now, now your other question, which is like, should I believe the Christian? Should I believe the Muslim? Yeah, should I believe? I don't care who's right or wrong. I just you should. Care about oh, the perspectives. Yeah. No, no, but you should. What? Reality is always: Do you value truth? Yes. Sir. So you do care about truth. Yeah. You can't say I don't care. I'm an engineer. I like uh, exactly. Students. If you're an engineer, then you cannot say anything goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have the you have something which is absurd, something which is um, logical, and something which we know is the only explanation. For example. Yeah. yeah. So what we need to know is we need to come to a conclusion based on our rational understanding yeah. that there cannot be more than one God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there are religions which do believe in more than one yeah. God, which we call polytheism. Yeah. So you have monotheism yeah. and you have polytheism. Yeah, I'm definitely monotheist. Why is that? Because I feel like uh, Islam is speaking about one God, yeah. Christianity is speaking about one God, but I feel like both are the same. It's just different interpretations about how you should do, do life, how you yeah. should perceive God, how you should perceive. Do you remember we talked about an independent God? Yeah. In Christianity, God is interdependent, not independent. So the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, which they believe in, if your dad was here, I would have asked him this, they believe in the Trinity and they believe that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are interdependent on each but other. I think my father still thinks uh, God is independent in a way. He just thinks. Why do you need I, a son? I don't know. I don't know. Which I don't know. I'm just guessing. Uh, He's a Christian. He, he explains his father is a Christian uh, that he seem, sees it as symbolic. It's just different forms of God. No, it can't be symbolic if they believe in the Son of God. Yeah. So when you, the question you need to ask yourself is why does an independent God require a son? Yeah. yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. That's what we discussed earlier. Yeah. yeah. So when I brought you to that verse, you said you agree with that verse. So he agrees with John 17, 3. Yeah. Because he shows, he said, yeah. Do you remember what the passage was? Yeah, it was it was sent by God. No, not just sent. So the passage first John 17, 3 says that this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent. So Jesus is here declaring, this is basically the Christian Shahada. You know, there's only one there's only one true God who is his God yeah. and he is just a mess the Messiah, the Christ, who was sent by that only true God. So even Jesus, when he was on earth, yeah. he identifies only one entity, not three entities like the Christians do, like your father does. Okay, I'm just speculating here. Yeah. Couldn't God send himself in a physical form to the to the world. You missed the point when he says about dependent and independent. Uh, if God is okay. if God is independent, why should that mean God is not independent? That's not sufficient, I think say, because you have to sense If him. God comes here but if he sends himself. Yeah if he comes himself then he'll be subject to the nature of this yeah, yeah, of this world. That's the reason he dies he in, yeah, in yeah, Christianity. Yeah, yeah he's high. Right. You understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah yeah I tell you what make it easy you are, you have the right thinking to proceed. No I think he's very close. Yeah. I think he's very close. Yeah, he's open. Yeah, he's open. No, he's yeah. with Ashit. Yeah. So you see, as an engineer, because you're thinking in a logical fashion, which is exactly the approach I'm taking as well, to take you step by step in a logical way, I want you to rule out all the impossibilities. Yes? And what then remains? Yes? Yes, the possibilities. Yes. yes, what what remains now is something that you now have to analyze that yeah. and then make a conclusion. Yeah. Like, like the way you did with, between polytheism and monotheism. Yeah, exactly. You concluded that it makes sense yeah. for God to be uh, independent, self-sufficient, yeah. and that only means there can be only one, yeah. isn't it? Of course, of course. Because then if you have two, and imagine both of them are equally powerful. Yes, one God says, I want sunset now. The other says, I want sunrise now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who's going to win? 
Yes. Yeah. They're equally powerful. Yeah. Now what's gonna happen, there's gonna be a clash. Yeah. Yes, a clash of wills. Yeah. And that's the reason, if you look at every polytheistic religion, like Hinduism, like the Greek polytheism, all of this, uh, they have a mythology in which the gods fight each other. They compete with each other. Yeah. Yes? And that's the reason in Hinduism, some of them believe Shiva is the almighty supreme god. Yeah. Others believe it is Vishnu who is the supreme god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in Greek also, you know, in the Greek gods, they had many gods fighting each other yeah. for power. Yeah. This is exactly what's going to happen yeah. because they all want to claim that they're the mightiest. Yeah. Yes? Same like humans, you know? When you have different nations, like before the nation states, before the United Nations, all the nations of the world, they were basically seeing who is the supreme. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. so even though England is like that small, yeah. but because of their strategies and their supremacy on the on the seas with the navy and so on, exactly. they were able to subdue a lot of countries yeah. because of their power. Yeah. So all of them, they were competing for power. And whoever is power, it wasn't like, oh, this is his land, leave it independent. Yes, we are nice people. It wasn't like that. At that time, might was right. And whoever was the mightiest will take the flag and they'll just host yeah. it there yeah. and they will challenge the mightiest come yeah. and take it exactly. and whoever was the mightiest then they will conquer them yeah. and uh, that's how we continue until we formed the nation states after, after the world war yeah. you know they realize that these wars can be devastating where yeah. millions die innocent people then they come to some conclusion and they came with, uh, but even today you know you have other ways of subduing people with these so called superpowers yeah. yes that's the reason they come collect a lot of arsenal, a lot of nukes, which they don't need today, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. Yes? Because this is detrimental to humanity. So as much as science has given us all the possibilities of a comfortable life, it has also caused a lot of destruction. Yeah. Because after all, the atomic energy, yes, the atom bombs and the nukes were discovered by the same scientists. Yeah. Yes? But they, maybe the intention was to do good. But then, you know, mankind, they again, for them, might is right. The yeah. Supremacy, this mentality will remain all the time. Yes? So that's the reason, you know, what we as Muslims we say that no human being has a right to tell us how to lead our life. Yeah. We rely primarily on our creator who knows us best. Yes? So you gotta watch there, you I'm sure you got a phone in your pocket. Yeah. Yes. When you buy these devices, they come with a manual. Yeah. Yes? What does the manual say? What is the best for that device? It, yeah. Yes, what do's and the don'ts. Similarly in the Quran, which is a revelation we believe from God Almighty, yeah. yes, he tells us because he's the one who has created us, just like the, uh, whoever created your phone, yeah. the manual is designed by them because they know exactly the weaknesses yeah. and the strength of the device. Similarly, God knows our weakness and strength. That's a really small description actually. Yeah. And in the Quran, Allah says, you know, do not make your, your whims and desires as your Lord. Yes, because many people, that is how they do. Yeah. So especially if you speak to Hindus in particular, they are saying that our religion is not based on doctrines like books. We base it on seeking. So we are always seeking for knowledge. Yeah. That might look good, you know, as a theory, but in practice, what happens is you got different people seeking different things, coming to different conclusions. Yeah. So what might be good for you, might be completely evil for another yeah, person. Exactly. And what might be evil and bad for another person, person might be might be really good for you you see what I mean yeah. so this is what subjectivity will lead us to it will lead us to chaos in a way yeah. and that's the reason you have so many different religions in India today yeah. even though they might come under the umbrella of Hinduism but is I personally think is different philosophies acting as different religions and different ways of life and that's the reason you you see the same thing in the Greek mythologies in in case of other religions where they where they say that we will decide you see one one thing that is an ego boost for us who have the free will and this is the shaitan and also the human beings yes is that we don't like anyone to take authority yeah. for our life yeah exactly you know it's an yeah. ego thing yeah yes even though you might inside your heart feel that is the right thing to do because if you look at everything that this Quran forbids you and I will agree even an atheist and agnostic yeah even someone of another religion other than 
Nigeria and Islam, logically they will think it's just and they say problems. Absolutely, yeah. So what are the issues which, uh, sorry, what are the things that the Quran forbids? It forbids adultery, fornication, alcohol, drug use, um, telling lies, yeah, uh, taking usury or, or interest, you know, where you give a capital sum and then somebody charges you maybe double that. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. All, all of these things, Islam forbids. And if you look at it objectively, you'll agree. Yeah, exactly. Yes? So what are the things that Islam permits? All the things which help you as a person to develop your life. So for example, if you had a... Give rights to women as well. Yeah, everything. Give rights to your neighbor. So even if your neighbor is a non-Muslim, yes? Mm -hmm. If he goes to bed hungry and you go to bed not hungry, then you are not a good Muslim. Uh, In fact, the hadith says you're not even. Half. Yeah, you're, it says no, you're, you're actually gone away even from Islam. Uh, to that extent, some of it goes. Can I ask you a sincere question? Yeah. If the brother can show you evidence that Islam is true, would you accept it? I don't think so. Because I would have to read this on my own and get yes, my own and get my own this perspective on Absolutely. it to be able to completely good, believe. Good, good. If I just hear another person saying how it is, mm -hmm. I can't believe if it's no, true. No, you're gonna, you're if I read you're gonna this, go through the five pillars, right? Yeah. Yeah. What is God? If you agree with what is God, I think that's the first the first pillar, which is the belief in God is the most important. And so so far what do you have heard? Do you now because you, you already said you're closer to being a, a thief, not yeah. an atheist? or an agnostic yeah. because you see you and I know that all these things we see even to the microscopic things yeah. like the shape of the snowflake yeah yeah it's complex isn't it yeah, yeah, and it's beautiful yeah it cannot just come about randomly now think of the universe you know which has everything in it from the mighty minutest things like the I don't know uh, like the quarks in the in the atoms yeah. you know to to your DNA for example yeah. yes the DNA is actually a code. I don't know if you have read much about it. Yeah. The DNA is actually a code yeah. which is consistent in all human beings. Yeah. 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 Now, why, where does it come from? It cannot just randomly. You know, you cannot have a program written randomly to to be of any use. That's true. Yeah. You might have some gibberish which you can call code, but it won't be of any use. Yeah. So the only plausible explanation is there must be a designer which has designed the snowflake. The universe, your DNA code, us as human beings, our organs, yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Intelligent and, design. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there must be a designer, and this designer is intelligent, like you correctly said, and it must have. He must have a will. Yes. And eternal, and, and self-sufficient, and independent. So the designer created you, just like your phone. The designer of the phone created it for a purpose. Yeah. Yes. So your watch has a purpose, your yeah. phone has a purpose, your sunglasses have a purpose. Yeah. What do you think is your purpose? To do, do, do good in life. To get the yeah, but good can be subjective, right? Remember we spoke That's earlier? That's the thing. That's the yes. thing. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Does anybody here think good and bad can be subjective? Yes. Yeah? So I'll give you a good example. And this example I use uh, most of the time when I'm discussing with agnostic and atheist. So, you know, today, I think almost all countries, abortion is legal. Yeah. Yes? Now, I don't know what your views are, what your views are, but I personally think it's wrong. To kill a child... It's actually impermissible in Islam. Permissible in Islam? Yes. Yeah, you're talking about exceptions. No, no, I'm talking about... It's not permissible in it Islam. Is a, oh, it, it, like, it is permissible. I'm not saying it's not permissible for like any reason why I'm pregnant and I don't want the baby. But it is permissible. It's permissible, like, it's permissible for like a lot of reasons. It's like, you're talking about exceptions, aren't you? You're talking about exceptions. Because where is permissible is if the life and death of the mother is at stake. Or if the health of the woman. That's why I said if the life and if there's a life and death situation where where the mother's life might be at, in danger, yeah. so that is an exception. Another exception is if she has been raped, for example, yeah. because it can have psychological impact on her life throughout her life. So then the the choice is given to her. Even then, the the the, the scholars do recommend yeah. that she does not.
un doesn't actually kill the unborn child. But most of the abortions which take place today, and I'm talking about thousands in a year, yes, are because the mother and the father decided that we are not ready to become parents yet. You see what I mean? But, but the question is, why should the unborn child suffer for their mistake? Okay, but you just said that you believe that morality, like you don't think it's objective because you, you say your morality is based on God's yeah. perception, but then you just said abortion, I think it's wrong. But then in Islam, they say that it's not necessarily, uh, like you can, I think that then... It is, it is not, it's prohibited actually. So it's not like you said, it's permitted. In, in Islam, the general rule, the general rule is to kill, to kill a potential life, to kill anyone yeah. is wrong and it's forbidden. So I don't know where you. Say you should just say, I, in my opinion, because my morality is not subjective, it's based on. Oh yeah, of Islam. course. That goes without saying. As a Muslim, I, I think it would be wrong unless it was under permissible state. No, no. I'm saying the general rule is it's forbidden. Okay, but the, the reason I brought this example up. I don't think anyone would say, "Oh, it's right." I don't think. Oh, uh, you. Do, why do you think it's legal? It's legal because. Because. What do children say? No, no. I want to know, as a woman, from your perspective, why do you think it's legal? Because I think that as women, we and as humans, we need to. I mean, you could. A lot of people could argue that life doesn't start from. Con conception at the end of the day i think a lot of people could agree that life starts in a heartbeat or life there's like lots of different nuances no, no, to life. life regardless of what you think you know yeah. trust trust me with all due respect yeah. when your mom was pregnant with you yeah. she said my baby the day she conceived and she realized she's a, she's saying i'm pregnant and she kept yeah. she kept nurturing you even though not like literally you know yeah. like her, her system yeah. and she she every time she spoke about you yeah. she said my baby I think it's legal. Now wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. If your mom, without you, your first heartbeat, even before she heard that, she already has accepted you as a child, and she loves you even without hearing the first heartbeat from you. Don't you think you as a child at that time deserved a life? And to speak your mind like the way you're doing now. Let her, let her answer. I, want to, I, want to I think it, that's, it literally bases on the on, on where you like believe life begins. Think, think from the perspective of your mom when she had you. I'm not thinking from the perspective. No, of I my want mom. you to think because that is I think you know when you when you when somebody brings something much closer to you, it's a weird then it makes you think harder. I think it's a it's a point, almost like a otherwise point. you'll say oh it's just a you know a fetus. They even don't want to use the term baby. They want to yeah. keep it as a fetus right. as something which doesn't have life. Something that can be aborted, you know. This is how, unfortunately, this is what humanity has been reduced to today. Yeah. You know, but, as you but say, every mom, trust me, every mom would have cherished that pregnancy, and I'm sure your mom and my mom and your mom did the same. I think, but of I, course, my mom wanted us to be alive. My and mom and dad had perfect, uh, perfect settings for having a child. Yeah, exactly. Perfect what setting. I, yeah. yeah. What is a perfect setting, my friend? They were yeah, old enough, exactly. My my understanding of a they perfect a setting is job. They had uh, yeah. you know like when when a man a man man and a woman when they have a union, yeah. they know what they're doing. They know the consequences of what will happen as well. That they are, it's possible that the 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 woman will get pregnant. Okay. So when they when they had a union, I know there are children here. I don't want to use those certain words, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, you're a grown up. They knew exactly what was the consequence. It's so my question, my question comes down to this: Was it the child's fault, or was it the parents' fault? Parents, of course. What do you think? Fault for what? For bringing the child, for, for being pregnant. Oh, it was the parents' fault. If it's a parents' fault, then why is the child being punished? But I feel like the parents can do it in a way to protect the children. What if they have no by killing money? them? No, they have no money. They have no. Uh, they have no. They should have thought of that before they the union. No yeah, but now it's too late. <laughs> Humans do mistakes. No, no, no. Yeah. But the thing is, this mistake is being paid by death of someone who did who did not. It wasn't it their fault. Yeah, but both of you said it was a parent's fault. Am I right? My question to you now. This is this is reason I asked you both this question. You see, this is where morality becomes subjective. 
and I believe that this is an important uh, even, question we all ask ourselves. But that's even that e in Islam, it even proves that morality is subjective. Because no, as, no, you, as you just said to me, we if the mother's Quran, life is in danger, this, then abortion yeah. would be like allowed. our morality comes from exactly what God told us. It's not it's, subjective. Yeah, and I'm saying. Yeah. So you know there are many Muslims who would like to have a drink for pleasure. Of course, of course. Now the Quran says alcohol is forbidden. Now you tell me yeah. if it was it was subjective and not objective, why do these same Muslims during the time of Ramadan stop drinking alcohol? Because they know it's wrong. Okay? I, of course, if you're Muslim, then your morals are not subjective because they're based on the Quran. But yeah. you're saying, um, why do we, because like, I'm giving you an example, you're talking about abortion, right? Yes. And I'm ex explaining to you that even in the Quran, they would, this, this, um, if the mother's life is in danger, it's permissible to have an abortion. Yeah, but exceptions so don't make the rule. Example. You should know that. It exceptions was. do not make the rule. But you bring in, you bring in an exception when about. most, like I told you, most of the abortions which take place are not because of the exception. It's because of being negligent, being reckless, being um, basically they don't care about. Uh, the life of a child. I, I understand completely what you mean. The thing is, I feel like if you don't have the settings for being a parent, you don't have money, you don't have this. I understand you made the mistake. You did the mistake. And the problem is it's either kill the child or give the child horrible, horrible settings. No, no, there's a third option. There's a third option. What's the third it's option? called orphanage. It's called okay, adoption. Yeah, adoptions. Yeah. And that is one of the one of the avenues which Islam gives you. Okay? So the, it's not only just either kill the child or bring it up in a terrible environment. By the way, the environment won't get any better. Yeah. <laughs> every every generation you'll see the environment. You'll see the, the even the air that you breathe won't be suitable for, for your next generation. So what, we stop procreating? No, you don't. You go up about being responsible parents, okay, the night or the day when you when you have a you, the union, you should know the consequence. And once you realize that, and then whatever the consequence of that is, you should be responsible enough to not kill a life if a life is something that God blesses you. What if you're not in symbiosis with your partner? What if I want to do, um, uh, I want to uh, leave my child to an orphanage because I don't feel like we have the settings, but my wife or my uh, significant other, she thinks no, we should keep the child. We have different views. Like keep the child, then I agree with her. Yeah, but like you said, your significant other. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I don't have a significant other, but I mean. No, no, but it's, look. At the end of the day, I think most of the most of the legal requirements is, it goes based entirely on the mother. What do you think? Because you're not the one getting pregnant, so yeah. then they say it is her, it is her right to decide whether to bring the child yeah. in the world. Or not. Yeah. So it's 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 mostly most of the uh, places where abortion is legal, they give this option to the woman. Okay? So it goes back to that. But like I said, if there is a third option to give the child, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of women uh, and, uh, and men out there who would love to have a child but they can't conceive. Okay? And these people would do anything to get a child. So give them what you don't want or what you don't desire. Yes? You know, there are many parents today who don't want to have children at all. And they, when they grow old, they end up in a old age home when nobody comes to visit them, okay? No children, no grandchildren, nobody. And I'm not saying this is not the case for people who have children. I'm sure there are children out there who neglect their parents as well. But you see, in both cases, Islam tells you that you, if you are a, a person um, who is able to bring up a family, then have a family. And then once you have a family, give the right to the child and the child has right over the parents okay yeah. the parents and the children both have rights and we believe as creator he has rights and we as creation have right as well so the creator right his right over us is that he will never be unjust to us he will always be just to us in every situation and our situation our uh, right as the creation that we should not be ungrateful for the life he has given us you know today we might be sorry you wanted to say something no? Okay. Yeah, today we, we, we lead a life where we are, basically today, most if you look at most of our life, it's no different to the animals. Yeah, we are born, uh, we, you know, we grow up, we eat, we procreate, and one day we're going to die. It's become meaningless. 
So what do you we think? Too much. Yeah, not, not too much. I think too less of this, if you ask me. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you as an individual understand what is the purpose of your life, then you will lead a life which has value. So let me ask you. I think I don't. I don't think I got the answer from you earlier. What do you think is the purpose of your life? Because if it's just like animals, then what's the difference between humans and animals? There must be something you value in your life that you think is worth living. It's, it's worth for me to spend 80 years in this in this world and to give something back. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I think that's a good option. Anything else? What about those people who don't have families? Do you think they are valueless? No, of course. So what do you think is the real value of an individual? Love, maybe. Love? How about you? What do you think? What do I think the purpose of life is? Yeah, I think it's to experience life, to to experience your life as uh, as it's been given. Experience life. Yeah. Even animals experience life. What's the difference? Yeah, and are we... I'm trying. I, I'm trying to understand what's the difference between you as an individual, as a human being, yeah. and the life of an animal. Right. Because both of you eat, both of you procreate, both of you drink, yeah. both of you will die one day. Okay. As human beings, don't you think we as higher beings, in comparison to the animals, have a higher value as well? Is that just our ego? Are we higher beings? What about your ego? Is that a good thing? I'm saying, is it just our ego? Are we, we, are we higher? higher beings yeah. Are we? Yeah. Oh, no, no. We are, definitely, we, we are definitely higher beings compared to animals. We are top of the food chain. Okay, you don't see the animals building civilizations or having books and libraries. Okay, that's subjective that to a human perspective because we don't we don't like understand the language of. A so if you were, let's say, if you were a lion and you were the king of the jungle, yes, even if you didn't understand the language, what do you think would be your purpose? My purpose as a lion. Yeah. In your case, a lioness. By the way, if you were a lioness, you'd be hunting for the lion. Do you know that they do most of the hunting? Yeah, that's interesting. Like, Lions like, sit back and... Yeah, yeah. That's why he's a king. <laughs> so, what would be your purpose? You see... As, as, yeah, but that's... Like I said, just to survive and to yeah. procreate. It's no different to the animals. To eat, to sleep. That's to like procreate. animals. It's yes. just like animals. Of course. You know, we... Was it? I'll tell you what. What's the difference between animals and human beings? One key difference. And this got nothing to do with religion, by the way. What do you think is a key difference? Anyone? Engineer? So, Shall I tell you? It's, self, self -aware, no. it's, called, it's called rationality. We are rational beings. Animals are not. Animals are basically, they, they just rely on their um, instincts. That's why they're called, that's why the term animal instinct, you know? Because they just react basically, given the situation. So you might have a pet, um, a lion, even if it's a cub, you might have cherished it since it was from the days born. But because it's got an animal instinct, one day it's going to bite you or, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's going to slash your face maybe. Because it's, it's, among, it's an animal at the end of the day, isn't it? It's not something that you can predict. But we as rational beings, we are different. And that's the reason we are able to have civilizations, we are able to write books, have libraries, make movies, you know, have a purpose. Every individual has a role in their life and that's a purpose. That's what they think. But we, the Quran again, we, we go back to the Quran. What does the Quran say? Our purpose in life is, Allah says in the Quran, that we have not created the, the mankind and the jinn, which is another creation. Both of them, they have the free will, except for the worship of God. Now, what does worship mean? Worship means to submit to the will of the one true God. So, for example, I gave you the example of um, the right of the parent, the right of the child, the right of the neighbor. Even if your neighbor is a non-Muslim, they have a right, you know. Like if you go, um, uh, if your neighbor goes hungry and you lead a life which is nice and comfortable, then you are accountable for that. Why did you not care for your neighbor? Even if they don't believe in God, even if they are atheists, you, they have a right over you in that case. So everything, if we lead a balanced life based on the objective reasoning God has given us, then we'll have a more fulfilling life. Because like I told you earlier, everything that God has forbidden, alcohol, fornication, adultery, you know, telling lies, murder, all these things are bad for you. Even you don't need to read the book. These are common things which people will come to an understanding objectively. 
So that's why I'm saying, why do we lead a life which is based on, you know, some people say your purpose in life is to be happy. You heard that? Yeah? You heard of it? Your life is happy. Then one day they have an accident and the purpose of life goes down the drain. They get miserable, depressed, anxiety, everything you can think of. Yeah? Because that is what they thought was the purpose of life. Unfortunately, that has been now... That's, that's now just a dream for them because they have gone through a process which has which is life changing. Yeah. Okay. You shouldn't chase happiness. You should chase purpose instead. Yeah, but you need to know what that purpose is. Exactly. Because then you'll become like people who say, "Oh, I'm a seeker," but they don't know what they're seeking. What are they seeking? Because everybody's seeking different things. So you get back to the same thing: subjectivity, and your moral subjectivity will then indulge in your ego because then everything you think is right is right everything everyone else thinks is right is wrong because it doesn't agree with your narrative so we must have an arbitrator who is who is impartial and who is objective and that can only be your creator yeah i need to go man yeah yeah sure what's yeah. your name oliver oliver nice very meet nice meeting what's your name hashim hashim nice yeah, to meet you you take care yeah thank you for your perspectives yeah so he said he was uh, an agnostic then after we spoke to him he said he believes in god now what is your belief do you believe in a creator agnostic is already believing in god no no agnostic is on the fence so you're not sure. You're like not sure where you are. So many different meanings. Yeah, it has Some different meanings. Agnostic is. Yeah. So atheist. You're not sure. Yeah, yeah. Atheist, you're sure that there is that you reject God. Yeah. Yeah. Peace is the opposite of that. That you believe there is a God. Yeah. Agnostic is in the middle. That you're not certain whether there is a God or not. So they're normally saying, "Oh, I need proof in order for me to yeah. acknowledge God." But then they say that there's no such thing as atheism because you cannot prove that there's not a God. The only th no one knows anything. You don't know if there yeah, is a God. They, they have made up their mind. Most of these are atheists. Like there is no matter what proof you bring to them. Like even if you, even if God brings them a special ladder that comes down from the heavens, when they see that, they will say, "Oh, it's just an illusion. I don't believe it." So no matter what proof that they, they uh, bring to them, they have firmly decided that there is definitely no God. So, you, sorry, did you say you were agnostic or you haven't decided yet? Well, I, I kind of like. I have, a I have a different perspective from agnosticism because okay. I, I, I was talking about this with my dad. I, I, I said to him, like, yes, like, two days ago, I was like, oh, I definitely feel like I'm in firm in my agnosticism. And what I meant by that is, like, I feel firm that, like, I believe in that, that there's a God. We're not created from nothing. Firmly, that's, not, that's not agnosticism. But, okay, well, in my mind, I'm You're made, a feast. I made up my own. You're a thief. Um, if you if you um, firmly believe there is a creator, then yes, is that what it's called? Yeah, that is okay, a, I'm that. That is thief. So you believe that there is a god, and you believe that God has created you. Why did you come to that conclusion? That's quite interesting, actually. Um, On what basis did you come to that conclusion? I feel like as humans, God is so beyond our comprehension, and yeah, that's essentially my okay. conclusion. So if you if, if if you were asked this question... For us to, to believe that we truly can feel faith in a scripture or a, a religion is like maybe just our ego. I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I you know what You know what the Muslims call this? This is called the fitrah. So you have a natural, um, it's, it's, it's a natural inclination for you to to actually steer your way towards God and a creator that all of this just didn't pop into existence one day. So what you're actually saying is something that we as Muslims believe that every human born with the fitra, then later on their parents or their society um, steers them away from this understanding of oneness of God and, the, and a creator being. I believe in the oneness of God. I believe there's one God. Alhamdulillah, yeah. I just don't, I just, so you, you I'm believe in, Muslim and a Christian. I'm you know, you believe in the first part of what we call the Shahada, that if you yeah. believe in that Allah is one and there's no other partner, no other being who is co-equal to him. So you believe in the first part of the Shahada. And this is quite 
interesting because like I said, it is your fitra which has led you to this, or maybe your 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 environment, yeah. your understanding. So it's it's your fitra is getting unclouded, which is a good which is a good sign, alhamdulillah. And we pray Allah gives you the guidance, gives you the guidance to come to an understanding. Because you see, look, like I said earlier, we all are going to die one day. Yeah? And by the time you reach your old age, it might be too late. Because one day, you know, we don't know, we'll just not be in this world anymore. Right, I want to talk to you about uh, the afterlife. Yeah. So, I was thinking about the afterlife, right? Interesting. I was thinking, the afterlife seems pretty boring. Uh, you haven't seen the afterlife. No, it's, we have Especially the one that Islam uh, promotes. Okay, <laughs> right? It Maybe just, think about it. it. What, is, so what, is, what is the best feeling in the world? Is it happiness or is it relief from pain? Like, imagine right now, you were just giving pleasure the whole day. Yeah. You could do, just to have pleasure all day. Eternal bliss. Don't you think you get bored? Yeah, because at the end of the day, humans, we are like rich people. People have just, they have access to so much pleasure. Yeah. They become self-destructive. Like, we are so dual as humans. I was thinking about heaven and I was like, heaven doesn't sound blissful. It sounds like you, you know, would why literally you think get bored. You'd sit and you'd just have all this pleasure all day and you'd be like, right, I want to... I need some interest. I need some. No, no. By the way, in in order in order to go, get bored, it's not like pleasure is taken away from you. It's your mundane life which will get you bored. It's not the fact that the pleasure is getting you bored. It's your mundane life. For example, if you did the same thing over and over again, yeah. even if you were a millionaire and you were given all the toys and all the all the good things which you consider to be pleasure, yes. If you keep repeating the same thing, then you'll get bored. But if you had like different things every day, and what you're thinking, you're thinking from a perspective you as a human being yeah. yes yeah. with your carnal body with yeah. your with your physical body limited yeah. which has limited abilities yeah. but you see when we die we as muslims we believe you'll be given a new body mm. when you're resurrected a new body which is going to be great in height okay having different abilities different power and you know what is the most beautiful thing or pleasurable thing that you'll see in Jannah when you when you're in paradise yeah. is the sight of God Almighty you will forget all the other pleasures just looking at Allah the pleasure the blessing of that itself yes you can't imagine so don't try that yeah it's, it's something that we cannot imagine because we don't even know what God looks like so there's no way you can imagine what it is so if you know if a person has never seen a beautiful I don't know say for example a waterfall yeah with a beautiful rainbow or something so the first time when they see it they'll be mesmerized by it by the beauty of nature but you're saying that this is the thing i was just thinking about yeah. the, the whole idea of like being a christian being a muslim is you believe that life is a test and then you reach eternity you go to jannah and i just don't feel like you can tell me about all the reasons why okay the quran's been preserved it has so many you can prove it that this is the word of god in so many different ways but to believe that when i die i go into this eternal paradise and the eternal paradise is explained to me and i i i, I don't feel convinced that we're living I, Okay. Yes. I feel like it's just an extension of the yes. ego. Yes. And it's yes. like you just, oh, you're just like an extension of yourself and you're it's living not, forever and you're going to be, I'm going to be here forever. Like, yeah, but once again, like I said, I you're, you're I thinking know. with a mind, a which, which is as a human and, yeah. and a carnal mind. So your understanding, even your. Uh, your vision about what the heaven is yeah. it'll be limited and that's why Allah says in the Quran that you'll get things which your eyes hasn't seen and your ears haven't heard yeah. and your mind yeah, yeah and your mind hasn't even thought about okay and that's the reason so what you're doing now is using like you keep saying ego you're right you're thinking from an ego which is human and you're looking at you from your limited mindset and your limited understanding of what paradise is like by the way the other option is hell <laughs> Which one would you prefer? Well, paradise. <laughs> exactly. So, so let's not argue over something that God has given you as a blessing. You see? What are you thinking right now? But Trust. I, but I kind of yeah. feel like life on earth, like in my spirit in a way is like... Are you bored by the way in this life? No, I don't feel bored. Right. You're not bored? I think so how do you think moments of boredom. You yeah. know, by the way, this life has not just 
the good, it also has the bad. bad. It has the pleasure and it has the despair as yes, well. Yeah. You have the hope and you have the despair. Yeah. So this life has given you a lot. Yeah. It's not consistent. Yeah. If it was consistent, then yes, you agree, you will be bored and you might even, uh, you know, some people stop living their life in this life. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is not what paradise is. Paradise is the complete opposite, where you as a person would, whatever you desire, you'll get your wishes your granted, yeah? And you will not have a moment of despair. You will not have a moment of being bored. You will always have, for eternity, the bliss and the, um, what do you say, the, the, the gratitude. You will show gratitude to God at that time, that he has given you paradise and of hellfire where you would be burning for eternal eternity as well so this is like I said in this life is the option you're given for whatever limited time that we live until we breathe our life last you will have the ability to choose and once you breathe your last then that choice is then taken away from you because God has given you ample time ample opportunities to come to the conclusion to worship him alone and what I mean when I say worship I don't mean you go to the mosque uh, or in the corner of your room and pray all day. No. Worship means to to, to do everything that he has told you to what he, and stop uh, yourself from doing things which he has made forbidden. Okay? And this is what it is. You go about living your life and by the way, one of the greatest things you can do for your family is to earn for your family and bring, uh, bring up your family as a mother and as a father to have the responsibility for the whole family yeah. Yeah. To, to fulfill their needs, their rights. So if you do that, yeah, all that comes under obedience of God. All that comes under worship of God. Yes. So if somebody, for example, is walking on the road and there's a big uh, branch or something that they can just carry and put it aside, that is worship. Because what they have done, they have cleared the way for other people to benefit from. Yes. And this is what it is. We go about our daily life without any problems whatsoever, except you stop doing all the things that God has forbidden. Like for example, you probably know, one of the things Allah has forbidden is alcohol in the Quran. Now if you look at the problems today, many of the problems, they stem from the consumption of alcohol. And I don't mean just a person consuming it, I mean the person that they are around as well. So they might be drink driving and kill someone who has never had alcohol in their life, a teetotaler, okay? Or they might, uh, I don't know, beat up their spouse every day because of the impact of the alcohol. And if you look at the NHS, you know, most of the revenue of the NHS yeah. goes about treating either directly alcohol-related causes yeah. or indirectly. There are many things. It causes cancer, it causes depression, anxiety. A lot of problems can be solved. What does Islam say? It nips it in the bud. It says, don't drink alcohol. Yeah? Because even the government knows all these things, they will promote it. You see, during Christmas, they'll say, don't drink and drive. Within half an hour, you see another ad of vodka or some, but, some would, alcohol. Would you say like, for example, they are looking for like interest. Yeah. In the UK, we have like a slightly horrible culture where like people here. It's a, like, we have a head of this society, and you can say it's horrible. You can, I mean, personally, I'm not really. I don't consider myself a headless, but like lots of people here are, right? Yeah. Would you say that comes from capitalism and it comes from a profit driven society or it comes from like um, people straying away from religion? I mean, because yeah. they're interlinked, but I'm just saying like. It's like what I told you earlier what these people have done, they have made their God as their yeah. whims and desires. Once they have done that, then they don't care about any other authority because they think they are the authority. And capitalism is included in that. It doesn't mean like we don't earn our living. Of course we do. Yeah. But without, for example, interest is something that Allah has made haram. Interest, you know, taking money. Uh, the bankers, for example, when they, for example, if you wanted to buy a house, you would take a loan from them, a mortgage, but then you repay them with interest. Of course, and like loans aren't allowed in. Is exactly. Like, so you see, yeah. Allah has told us, go about yes. your daily life with money, but don't abuse the system. Yeah, and of course, like Islam gives you all these great rules so you don't, so you can essentially like live life.